Hey guys, it's Paul once again. I'm finally going to review Mama's Home. Now, Mama's Home was released by Majestic Home Video. They only released maybe four or five movies and they just kind of vanished. But not much is known about them. They didn't really release any well-known movies, just a few obscurities and that's it. Their videos are very hard to find. Eventually, I was able to find Mama's Home. I've been wanting this one forever. It was on the top of my list and it only popped up once on eBay in the past four or five years. Um, unless there was another time I missed, but I'm pretty sure it only popped up maybe once or twice in the past five or six years. It's an extremely difficult video to find. And on um, IMDb, it only has, well, it has no ratings and no reviews, except for me. I put a review up there, so you could go read it if you want. But that made me want this movie even more. The fact that it's so obscure that it has no ratings or reviews on IMDb made me just want to dig up this movie and really find it. Now, look at the artwork. The artwork is great. I love the artwork. It was one of the reasons why I wanted this video so much. The title, well, the original title is Captives, and it was directed by Gary P. Cohn, which we'll go into in a second. They retitled it Mama's Home, and they put some really gruesome artwork on here. And I love it. I guess we're supposed to believe that it's a mother cutting her son's throat. The guy doesn't look too young, but um, I'm guessing that's what we're supposed to believe based on the cover of the box. Right on the top of the back of the box, it says, Naughty Slasher Film but a study in psychological terror with a twist of irony. So despite the very slasher-esque cover, the back is honest and says, well, we're not a slasher film per se. I just thought that was funny. One of the few boxes that said, okay, so we kind of lied to you on the front. We're actually not a slasher movie. And it's not by any means. Even when Majestic Home Video redid the opening title sequence, they had made mistakes. I mean, it is so <laughs> amateur. It's like they had one of those, um, back in the 80s, you could buy a character generator for your VCR. Just hook it up to the VCR, and you could record characters like titles on the screen. And that's pretty much what they did, and you could see mistakes. In the middle of the, of the title shot, there's a, um, it says Mama's Home, obviously, but if you look at the very bottom of the frame, you see Mama's Home again, as if that was a, a second option, that, a second font that they could have chosen. And they just kind of left it there. It looks stupid. It's on the very bottom. You can see it. You're supposed to hide that stuff. You're supposed to add some spaces so it's out of the frame. But it's there. They hardly put any effort into this. Now, the movie was made by Gary P. Cohen. He had made the video violence movies. Captives was made in between 1 and 2. Then video violence is a very funny, uh, tongue-in-cheek, black humor kind of movie. It has no choice but to be just that because it is a shot on video movie. It's really hard to take the uh, shot on video movies of the... 80s very seriously because they do look like homemade movies but uh, after making that movie he wanted to do something serious a serious comment on violence is what he says and what he came up with was captives he pitched it to camp video who released video violence and they passed on it but they agreed to distribute video violence too so Cohen still had captives and it was just I guess sitting on his shelf until he found someone to pick it up in the back of video magazine he found an ad and uh, it was for Majestic Cohen Video and they picked up captives and uh, what they did to it was a travesty they really destroyed the movie pretty much I guess what they were thinking is that okay it's not a really a horror movie I mean there's a, there's a little bit of blood here and there it's more like a thriller at some time so I guess they thought well this is kinda of boring and what they did is they cut off the introduction and they took all the long dialogue sequences and they threw on top of it music very loud music and you could barely hear any of the dialogue which makes it difficult for me to review the movie itself it's pretty unwatchable so this is more or less a VHS review in the strictest sense is that it's a review of the VHS cassette itself not so much the movie pretty much what you really know about the movie is from the back of the box because you can't really follow the story because you can't follow the dialogue it's really difficult to tell what's going on because of the booming audio over it the booming music but uh, from the back of the box we can tell that it's uh, a woman and her two brothers and they're going to get revenge on her ex-husband's family because she feels she was framed for killing her son in a fire her little child or whatever so they go to that house uh, 
to the hus ex-husband's house where his family is and force them to watch home movies that are supposed to prove that she didn't leave the child in the house, it was her husband. I can't tell that from watching the movie. The only way to really watch the movie on this cassette is to read the back of the box and to try to put the pieces together watching it, actually watching it. So, Gary Cohen wanted to make a really serious movie with this. Gary P. Cohen did his best with uh, Mom is Home. He really did. And there's some good shots in this movie, but it does have a lot of flaws. Flaws that you would expect from a low-budget, uh, homemade, shot on video movie. One of the flaws is just continuity errors, like a girl with a bag on, on her side and then the next shot it's uh, behind her. Stupid things like that, but you even see those in big Hollywood movies, so I'm not so worried about that. But there are just weird logical errors in the movie, just things that don't make sense. Like when the husband is leaving the house, he's leaving out of the garage, as he's backing out of the driveway, the th these three people, the terrorists of this family, they sneak into the garage and you, you can't help but think he didn't see them. He didn't see them just go under the garage door. He's right there pulling out of the driveway. Things like that kind of makes you think, oh, well, that doesn't make sense. It's hard for me to believe that, and it just pulls you out of the movie. Not that you can actually watch the movie because you can not you can barely follow the story. Most of the cast is his family, as you can tell, and probably his family. And he's even in the movie himself. You see him snort some coke and get down with a prostitute, but I would love to see the original version, captives of this. Um, I think the movie has potential despite trying to be a serious SOV movie. It has a few kills, I think the nanny is stabbed in the movie, and uh, one of the bad guys gets drowned in a tub. Nothing gruesome, nothing exciting. It's a real shame that Majestic Home Video really did butcher this movie. I mean, I would love to see a full version of this movie because I do think it could have some potential as a serious SOV movie. Can't Motion Pictures, the DVD company, not the original VHS company. I don't know why they did not distribute this movie with uh, Video Violence 1 and 2. It just doesn't make logical sense to me. A lot of their choices with their DVD releases didn't make sense. Like uh, distributing um, John McBride's movies separately. They should have been a two-disc set. And I think that what they should have done with the Video Violence movies was at a second disc with Mama's Home. Why not? There was talk about them, uh, Can't Motion Pictures, DVD to release Mommy's Home on DVD, but their sales, their DVD sales were so poor that we might not even see that. Someone else might have to pick it up, but I don't think anyone's going to pick up this movie unless it's something extremely independent on a DVD-R, right? So, that's pretty much Mommy's Home. I can't really talk about the movie too much because it's really hard to follow the story. The shots look okay. They don't seem too bad. It, the acting isn't anything more than what you would expect from an SOV movie. Um, there isn't blood, guts, gore. It's not the kind of movie that would be suggested from the front of the box. Back of the box says, not a slasher movie, so if you wanted to rent this movie in the video store, um, read the back of the box, because you're not going to get a slasher movie, even though it, just, even though it does show a girl being stabbed on the back of the box, <laughs> right under it saying, not a slasher movie. Uh, but try to find this movie. It's extremely rare, and if you find it, you're extremely lucky. I haven't seen too many of these. I searched a long time for it and I finally found it. So this has been Paul with SlasherIndex.com. Now check out the site. There's a lot of new scans on there and I still have a bunch more, over a hundred new ones. Also I added in the SlasherIndex.blogspot.com, I added a new interview and it's with a VHS artist, a, v a horror VHS artist who did the artwork for like the Magnum's uh, Drive-In Massacre and he said he did the artwork for Reanimator and a chopping mall and stuff like that. He had very little to say. In fact, he didn't even like horror movies. He didn't see any of the movies that he did the artwork for. Go check that out. It might be interesting to you. And um, that's it here. Keep a lookout for my next review. Not sure what it's going to be, but I hope to do it soon. So, adios. We did a third video, but it actually, I believe it was between Video Violence and Video Violence 2. A lot of the cast members who were in the first film were in captives. It was our attempt at um, a serious comment on violence uh, in the world at the time. I think the plot of the movie is still decent, and I wouldn't mind remaking that with better equipment, but I would also say that I think the silliness of Video Violence 2 was a result of being too serious on captives. Camp didn't take captives. Now, I'm, I'm racking my brain to try to think what the company was who did take captives. I think they lasted about, oh, a month and a half. They took captives 
and they cut off the whole opening uh, with the titles. I think it set up everything. They cut that off, did some slow motion of scenes later in the movie, which I think gave away everything, put some stupid music and made an awful box to it with people who weren't in the movie and called it Mama's Home. Uh, I, I've never seen that in a video store. I don't think anything came of it. Oh, and you.